Most churches talk about the past and look ahead to the return of Jesus. But what if a church started at the end and looked back? And what if this church was available not just to one community, but the whole world? Are you discouraged because churches neglect to teach and prepare for the end times, the restoration of Israel, the reality of Islam, and persecution? Are you currently seeking a church that embraces those concerns? Would you like to be a part of something that is spiritually groundbreaking and world-changing? We are the End Time Church, a church with the end in mind. Join us now at endtime.church. And you have joined us now. Fantastic. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Pastor Christopher Manti is me, and that is Pastor Anderson. Of one of these months, I'm going to get it right. Uh, <laughs> praise God. I was pretty close there. How are you, my friend? Doing good. How are you doing? Excellente. Uh, too blessed to be stressed, as we say. That's what they say. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. And uh, nice shirt. We love it. Yeah, love yeah. From the true God. Amen. Resist the beasts. Amen. Hashtag. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is for our going out in the uh, into the mosque and stuff shirt. Um, who knows? One day, you know, where we're called to be, that's where we go, right? Uh, yeah. So welcome one and all to wherever you're watching this from. If you're on weartheendtimechurch.com, welcome, welcome. Please play with the new chat there if you're on that site. If you're not, that's all right. The old one still works fine. Uh, say hello where you're from. If you're new, if you want to, say hi. Uh, that would be totally awesome, no pressure, but if you're on YouTube or Facebook streaming or even Periscope or Twitch, yes, Twitch. Do you know what Twitch is? It's for the kids. That's just when you like make a sudden movement, like you get electrocuted and you Twitch. <laughs> That's also right, but it's actually a social media streaming platform that a lot of gamers use. Oh. Um, but a couple of months ago, I heard about a church that started up of gamers, because they just started following this one dude, and he happened to be a, a Christian, and he just started meeting with them regular, you know, like we're doing. And uh, now it's nice. like hundreds of folks regularly yeah. um, worshiping the Lord together and learning. So I'm like, wow, fantastic. Discipleship is happening everywhere. Um, and praise God for that. So, uh, And we've branched out to some new uh, locations as well and groups and pages. So welcome. If this is your first time, we want to uh, welcome you in with virtual hugs, fist bumps, and uh, whatever else you'd like to <laughs> accept as it's a greeting, wrong. we will do that. That's right. Boom. Pound it, noggin, and all that stuff. Um, so uh, anyways, tonight uh, Jake McCandle is going to bring our message. Uh, he's actually recorded it for us in the wee hours uh, because he got called away today to something. I don't even remember what it is, um, but um, kind of a last minute thing, but that's all right. He's got us covered. We are good to go. And so we well, want to we'll do it for two messages, right? What, what's that? He's pulling double duty with two messages at one time. Yes, I know. It's crazy. Dude can do it all, I guess. I can't do that. Can you do that? I've never I can't. Thought. No, I cannot. I'm too singularly focused, right? Tunnel vision or something. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah. So um, welcome, guys. Please, uh, again, explore around whatever site you happen to be on. If you're on YouTube or Facebook and make a comment, we will see it, uh, and we'll try to get to it. Um, but if you want to interact with each other, Again, it's really great to use our portals that we have uh, created and have created for us um, to interact that way. And there's a link on wherever you are for prayer yes. uh, to let us know you're here. And, hey, by the way, I visited you guys, and here's my info, and, you know, reach out to us. Great. Um, there's a link to our app directly from wherever you are. Um, please get that. Uh, we've got almost 1,900 folks now on it from all over the world. Interactions constantly happening, which makes my heart feel good. Oh, yeah, that's where the church is really at. I mean, this the end time church are meeting on Monday nights. I mean, there's, you know, a good number of people that come here, but really the action happens on the app, you know, with the, the men's group, the women's group, the the prayer groups, the discipleship groups, the former Muslim groups, you know, all these different groups we have. That's where the action's at every day of the week. You know? Amen. That's not even an exaggeration. I mean, like literally every day. Yeah. Uh, folks are just stepping up and uh, using it. It's, it's wonderful to see. And that's the vision of it. You know, we, yes, we're a real church. You know, we really meet here uh, once a week um, just for, to worship together, to fellowship together. Cause we're friends too. 
I mean, yeah. a lot of us, right? It's, it's awesome. And new friendships are made, and it's fantastic. And we learn from the Word of God, and we disciple that way. So uh, it's great that we get to do that, and we love doing it Monday nights, and we have a little after-party video chat, you know, more private thing afterwards if you're into that. Um, but then again, the app is constant all day, 24-7. Uh, whatever's on your mind, uh, use it. Just use it. Use it. Utilize it. Um, make something new with it. You know, hey, I felt led by the Lord to uh, do this or that or the other thing. Let's let's do it. Let's talk about it. Let's do it. Uh, so uh, feel free to do that. And there's a give button as well. There's a big green one uh, on our new portal uh, or it's up above in your menu. Please, whatever you're uh, just prayerfully consider that and ask the Lord what uh, he would have you do. And just be obedient in that. That'd be awesome because that's how we're brought to you. We're not supported by anyone or anything other than ourselves and uh, whoever's uh, watching. So feel free to do that, please, generously. That would be awesome. Because uh, we want to continue, obviously, to do this. The stuff that we use, we want to make it improve all the time. We want to um, make it state of the art, really. Um, we just want to make it easy, be professional at all times as much as we can. <sighs> you know, some of us really aren't really into being professionals but we will give it a try okay i got a t-shirt uh, so, on i don't i'm not professional shirts as long as it's a shirt chris that's as really all yeah, that's true. yeah pants can't see so it is what it is that's neither here nor there it's not <laughs> i don't know where it is but just i'm gonna imagine that it's there okay <laughs> so uh yeah guys please just interact uh, utilize what we've got share this sharing is caring sharing is caring sharing is caring remember that Remember, we like the likes, we love the loves. But sharing is caring. We just share it out, man. You, we all have networks that are far bigger than we think they are. Yes, right. And you, you actually kind of touched on that uh, last week with you know, don't don't believe the uh, lies of the enemy. Don't believe that you're this, that, or the other thing. The Lord's going to use you if you say, "Here I am." He'll use it. He'll use you, and you're going to get to far more people than you ever imagined. Like oh, yeah. truly, far more. Um, it's not just, you know, guys who, who are giving a message or, or you think have a platform. Guess what? You have one, too. And people are following what you're saying. And they're actually respecting what you're saying a lot of the times, even though they may not say it. Right. They might not tell you. They might not come up to you and say it, but they're watching what you're doing. Yeah. And we're being watched. Right. Obviously, the Lord's watching us. The enemy's watching us. But so are other folks. And we always want to give a great um, witness in that. Right. We're trying to be Christ like like Jesus as much as possible. Um, so anyway, uh, hello to everyone, one and all. Let's get into the time of worship, unless I'm forgetting something. Maranatha, don't want to forget that because that's how we should be living. Uh, the millennium is coming, you guys. The kingdom is coming. And uh, let's, let's this down payment, this deposit of the Holy Spirit, this just just inkling, this, mid, this teeny tiny bit of God, really, that we've got in us is more than we can think or or ask and it's mightier than we could even imagine now he is really willing to work and be miraculous right in our life and in our walk as long as we're willing right send me and he will all right that's it uh chris if you're ready man i'm ready to worship the lord let's go ahead and do this and we'll be back to pray and then hear the word of god all right friend all right so this week I've been really looking at uh, really what heaven is going to be like. You know, I've been reading these accounts of near-death experiences of people that have gone to heaven and seeing the other side. And, uh, you know, I've been really thinking about, you know, what is that going to be like? You know, the book of Revelation talks about songs that we will sing. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, who is to come. Songs that we will sing in the presence of God and all those songs, you know, the songs of people with no death experiences heard the songs we read about in scripture that we'll be singing. They're, they're declaring the holiness of God. And I really wanted to, to the worship today to kind of take on that aspect, take on that atmosphere so that we can join even now with the heavenly choirs singing holy unto the Lord. So wherever you're at tonight, wherever you may be, just take a moment these next few moments, get aside, get quiet, just focus on God and his holiness. And I'm certain you'll know these songs. These are not uh, new songs or anything. Uh, we've sung them before, so I'm sure you'll know them. So sing them along with me and sing them from a heart of worship tonight. All right, here we go. Oh. 
place their trust and their hope in you, God, would have a new life and new life eternal. God, I thank you and praise you, God, for the eternal life that you have given by your shed blood, Jesus. We worship you tonight. Oh, 
color flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I see. Praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. I will adore you, yeah. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder. Of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath, and living water. Such a marvelous mystery. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah, all creation I see, praise to the King of Kings, you are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. All creation I sing, praise to the King of Kings, and you are my everything, and I will adore you. Yeah, Lord, we worship you tonight, God. We adore you, God. We lift up your name, God. How great is your name, God. How wonderful, how splendid is your name, Jesus. We love you, God. We lift you up tonight. Lord, be glorified in our worship tonight. We love you, Jesus. We lift you up tonight, God. Lord, you're worthy of all our praise. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, and all the earth rejoices, all the earth rejoices. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. To age he stands, time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three and one, who found the Spirit Son. Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the Lamb, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, oh we 
see how great, how great is our God. Yours is the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great. Jesus, you are great, God. You are worthy of all of our praise, God. And tonight, Jesus, we lift you up, God. We glorify your name, God. We want to bless you in this place tonight, Father. We thank you, God, for who you are, God, for you are holy, Lord.
do that last verse again. Holy, 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 man has fallen from me. Through the blood of Christ thy Son, this soul can be redeemed. Justice, truth, and mercy. Join with love to crown me, Savior of sinners, soon returning King. God, that you are the soon returning King, that you are the Savior of the world, God. I thank you, God, that by your blood, this sinners, this sinner is saved by grace. I thank you, Jesus. We lift you up tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen, my friend. And thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the music that is your creation. It's evident everywhere we look. The evidence of you is in this very realm, in this earth that we can see. But the faith that we have, the measure of faith that you've given us, is for things that we can't yet see. Or if it's seen, it wouldn't be for faith. And so tonight as we hear from your servant, your son, our brother Jake, We want to hear about little faith, the story of little faith, what even a little faith can do. And you told us if it was only the mustard seed, the mountains would move. Be with us tonight. Anoint the speaking, anoint the hearing of us who are alive right now and any who would listen afterwards throughout the week or however long afterwards on the internet. We pray that your word does not return void. We know it won't. Penetrate hearts. Change minds. Steal our foreheads, Lord, and soften our hearts for what is to come. Ultimately, it is you who are to come. We thank you. We praise you. We lift your name high. We exalt you, Holy Spirit, We ask that the reading of your word and the teaching of your word be blessed. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, the message. Hello, endtime.church. It is great to be with you in some way, but I hate that I'm not there in person tonight. Well, you know, as much as in person as we can get online but I appreciate the opportunity to still share and to do this by video. Uh, so tonight, as we're having the service, I am speaking elsewhere. Person as we now, can get I want online, you to know, in time church is very important. It's vital what do we do here video. on Monday nights. It's uh, important so tonight, to me. Uh, but I service, do I take any opportunity I can uh, to speak with groups who aren't tracking where we're tracking. I believe that's an opportunity. And, uh, that does not mean that this is not important at all. And so I hope you understand that when I'm away and I hope you guys will uh, lift me up in prayer as I I speak with a crowd who is, who are going through a church who's going through the invincible uh, devotional and get to come in in the middle of that uh, and to talk about how that connects with the, the last days and where we're at prophetically. So a huge opportunity tonight. So pray for me, but also thank you for being here and, I, I hope the Lord will speak through our time through this uh, pre-recorded uh, message here. Again, just thank you for all that you do and for being a part of End Time Church. So since we have a rotation of preaching, which 
is really awesome. I think it's really awesome that it's not just left up to one person, that we get to hear different giftings, we get to hear different voices, and we get to see the Lord work. Uh, but when you're not preaching once every three to four weeks, you get a lot of sermons built up. So I have a lot of things that I would like to share, would like to preach. Uh, and so when it comes time, comes my time to, to preach, uh, usually it's, it's really searching through and praying through what is it that we need to hear now? Uh, well, what you're going to hear in this time was not on my list initially. It wasn't in the, the backlog of things I hope to preach at end time church or feel led to preach. Uh, but this week I was preparing for my Sunday message, as uh, many of you already know, because I've mentioned it many times. On Sundays, I am preaching and working through the Christian classic Pilgrim's Progress. And I know many of you are familiar with Pilgrim's Progress. If you're not, oh my, you need to get the book. You need to, I encourage you to get a modern uh, translation of it. Uh, but Pilgrim's Progress is a Christian classic. Uh, written by John Bunyan, who was imprisoned in the 1600s for preaching. And uh, as he's in prison, he writes this allegory uh, that what I love about it is it gives like a bird's eye view of what it means to follow Christ. And so he tells a story of a man named Christian who represents, yes, Christians, who is in the city of destruction, which represents our lostness, our separation from the Lord, our spiritual state before salvation. And in that uh, state, in the city of destruction, he receives a Bible, receives a book, and his heart is convicted uh, that he needs to leave or he's going to face the wrath of God and going to be destroyed with that city. And so he meets a man named Evangelist who represents a... Evangelist, you got it. You see it. You're tracking. If you're not familiar with Pilgrim's Progress, it's pretty easy to follow along. And so uh, the evangelist tells him about the the way to eternal life, the way to the celestial city, which is through the narrow path. And so a uh, Christian then embarks by himself, uh, pretty soon by himself, with everybody leaving his side. He starts this adventure, this journey on the narrow path to the celestial city. And so the book follows him as he goes through these twists and turns, facing challenge after challenge, then getting encouragement, getting instruction, uh, and then challenge after challenge, difficult challenges. But it gives a perspective of what it means to follow the Lord. And he gets off the path. He's brought back to the path. He's forgiven. He starts over. He continues on. And I love it because it gives a perspective that is important to us at End Time Church, which is that we shouldn't shy away from difficulty and that suffering and difficulty is a part of this this life, this fallen world, world. but it's also also a part of being a believer. believer. And I think that's one of the the positions we hold is what I call a late uh, tribulation rapture, uh, which means uh, that the rapture takes place towards the end or the later part, latter part of the tribulation, the final seven years. Uh, but that with that mindset, if you, if you hold to that view, uh, with that mindset, you understand, uh, that God doesn't say that we're not, that life is going to be void of struggle. I mean, right now, our hearts should go out to our brothers and sisters in China who are facing difficult decisions. Our hearts should go out for you brothers and sisters in California right now, uh, with what's going on and, and, just what we're facing it with this pandemic. Um, but it, there are challenges to the faith. And this is what I love about the book. Uh, at one time, it said that every uh, English Bible had a copy of Pilgrim's Progress next to it. And it's something that's really kind of fallen out of favor. A recent animated uh, video movie uh, has brought it back to the forefront a bit, but it's then kind of more uh, pushed down for just children to read and, and things like that. It's, it is great. It's something that children can follow along and participate in. Uh, but it, it's really to present the truth of the struggle following Christ, staying on that narrow path. Um, uh, and so I'm, I'm preaching through that on, uh, Sundays through, uh, my local church, Epic Church, which by the way is named Epic because we had to find an E name so that it would match end time church. So we've got 
EC International here at End Time Church and then locally Epic Church, NWA, Northwest Arkansas. And so uh, as I, so we've been working through that since we launched in January. And I, you can imagine my people are like, Jake, are you ever going to finish? And we're, we're towards the last part of this book. I, I go pretty much chapter or part of a chapter at a time. And uh, again, the Pilgrim Progress does not, Pilgrim, my copy looks pretty rough, but Pilgrim Progress is not scripture. It's not withholding the truth uh, like scripture does. Scripture is set apart. Uh, so I hate to say I'm preaching through Pilgrim Progress, but using it as a guide, telling that story, along with using Bunyan's note, the author, and, and then some I will uh, pull in that that add to the understanding of what's happening. And it allows me and pushes me to talk about things I might not normally uh, talk about. Uh, but I think Pilgrim's Progress is is a book that, again, just is, is parallel to our hearts here at End Time Church. Uh, that it's it's not just that we make a decision to follow Christ and that's it. Uh, it's it's a our decision to follow Christ is the start, and it's a daily walk with Him, a radical following of Him, where He we give Him all of us, we give Him our life, and we obey and we take those steps by faith, and we continue on. Difficulty comes, and we stay the course. We stand firm. We prepare for the next challenge, um, and we and we soldier on through that. Uh, that's really the heartbeat of, you know, yes, we want to give some instruction about the end times, but more than anything, we want to help one another, encourage one another, if we are that generation, uh, to be ready to stand firm. Uh, so we are working through, we're almost through the end of the end of that book. And if you've read it, to me, when it gets to the end, uh, the last few chapters, I just, oh, oh, I typically almost want to skip. It seems like, Bunyan just uh, it throws everything in at the last minute. Instead of uh, making this adventure some story part, he just gives dialogue. And uh, usually I skip that part and get right to the celestial city. Uh, but working through it, as I've been reading it uh, for the feels, well, it feels like the hundredth time as I'm preaching through it, um, some of those dialogues have spoke to me more than they have in the past. Maybe that's because I've skipped them. Uh, but in one of those dialogues, as I was studying it, I guess it's been uh, two weeks ago now, reading through it, I initially planned to skip in my, my teaching. And I, I'm reading through It's one that, honestly, I didn't even remember was in the book. And I, I said I've read it uh, numerous times. I've taught completely through it twice already at uh, different churches and different ministries. And as I'm going through it, there was a story there that hit me hard, convicted me hard. Uh, but I felt like, for our mindset here at End Time Church, as we talk about difficulty, we talk about suffering again, uh, and the understanding of, you know, being possibly being within a persecuted church. Some of you are in areas that are restricted, uh, and then also the, just the, the view of what we'll, we will face in the latter days, or what that generation will face. And so, taking all of that together, and then just some of the journey, personal journeys that some of us have been on, and I think all of us or on similar journeys in the sense of the Lord has brought us to a point where we, we see, Hey, something's going on. We sense that within the spirit, we we're seeing it match up with what's in the word. And as we're pursuing and seeking this truth, it's, it's put us at odds and, and it's put us at uh, going against the grain and it's not always easy. And it was in this chapter that I, I felt like it connected to that situation where we're at, and where that those of that last generation are going to be. And it didn't just give instruction to hold on, like most of Pilgrim Progress does, like most of the sermons I give, right, to, to stand firm. But what it really did was it talked about the attitude in which we should have. And then, then rather, rather than just saying, this is the attitude you need to have, it showed gave a, a story in which told of someone who took the wrong attitude. And again, that bird's eye view of what it means to follow Christ, we can look at that uh, view that they had, that attitude that they had. And I really think it should give us an attitude adjustment. So we're going to dig into the story of a gentleman named Little Faith. I'm sorry, you had to watch me get a drink there. 
they'll make them all you thirsty, right? It's just water, so it's okay. Uh, but so we're going to look at the story of little faith. Again, this is in a, a section that deals with dialogue, and it's a story that almost gets lost in there. Uh, but so I want to pick up the, the, the story. So Christian, the one who left the city of destruction, the one who headed to the celestial city, has completed almost his journey. Uh, he's book wise, he's three, he's two chapters from the end. And, uh, but for him, he's over two thirds, over three fourths of the journey he's gone on. And he's faced all kinds of difficulties, all kinds of challenges. And so he, he's traveling with a, a believer who was, it came to Christ and came to the narrow path and is headed to the celestial city because of the testimony of Christian and a former traveling partner that he had named faithful and so it's christian and hopeful and they're traveling down this this road and christian begins to tell hopeful the story of a gentleman named little faith who was on the same path and the same journey that they were on and i don't know about you but one of the things that that is so important about anybody of believers is that you're gathering and you're connecting with people who are on the same journey, on the same path. Maybe some starting out, maybe some at the same place, maybe some that uh, are near the end of their journey, some who have sailed through it really well, some who have uh, tripped and stumbled all the way through it. And we can hear from one another and it encourages us. We know we're not alone. We're, we know uh, we're there. And, and so this discussion they have, they're talking about a fellow sojourner uh, like themselves who had the name Little Faith. Little Faith was from the town of Sincere. And so uh, throughout this allegory, uh, the, the author Bunyan, he, he, well, the names are, are just very blunt, very just, this, you know, this, it's an allegory, but it's very close to the chest, what the names mean. Uh, so Little Faith, you can imagine what do you think is going to be a characteristic about him? Uh, yeah, he's probably going to have Little Faith, right? Uh, but he's from the town of Sincere. And so also it helps give perspective of where they're coming from uh, in the fact of he is sincere in his faith, He's which is rare from the people that we find on that journey. Most of them come from uh, towns like vain, vain conceit or vain or vanity or uh, pride or con- you know, th- these names that are negative and they're coming at this journey from a negative point of view or a false part of point of view. Uh, but little faith is, is sincere. So the story of Christian begins to tell the story of little faith. And so I want to bounce telling some of the story, reading some of the story. Uh, but again, so uh, Christian tells hopeful about this man in little faith who was on the same journey that they were, who had left, left the city of destruction, who had faced many of the tri- same trials they had, who had persevered, who had done well, and he came to a point deep into his journey, but still with a lot more to go. As Little Faith was traveling, three, and the book says hoodlums, and I just like saying that word, three hoodlums jumped him, mugged him, beat him, and robbed him. And once he comes together, gets himself together, and begins to inspect what they stole from him, He checks two things first. So in the process of going through the the narrow path, each true, sincere sojourner who comes to Christ, when they come to Christ, they receive a certificate in the book, in the allegory. The certificate is for them to hand to at the gate of the celestial city uh, for their admittance in, uh, which it represents in real life, in real spiritual life, is that when we are saved, when we trust in Christ, as we read in Scripture, the Holy Spirit is given as a down payment, as a guarantee, as a seal unto that day. And so the the certificate represents the the proof that we have that we're saved, which is the the Holy Spirit. Uh, So he checks, and his certificate is still there, this thing that is just priceless to him and should be priceless to every believer, their salvation. It's still there, along with some amazing jewels that he had. These jewels were something that did not have much value 
on earth on his through his journey but there were jewels that would go in a crown in the celestial city these were rewards that he had earned in the age to come and the scripture talks about those rewards it talks about us being rewarded for our faithfulness and his jewels are are still there then then next he goes to his money bag where he had the funds that were going to secure him throughout his journey, allowing him to eat, allowing him to sustain his, his journey. Um, so I guess Christian hopeful, we don't read much about this, but I guess they had some money bags and, uh, you know, we hadn't thought about, I read the whole book. I never thought, hi, hey, how are these guys eating all the, the way through? Uh, so they were funding their, their journey. So he, little faith reaches into his money bag. And he finds that most all of his money is gone. So now, how is he going to eat? How is he going to take care of the basic necessities? And that's where I want to pick up reading. And so I want to break out into uh, a few sections as I, I read through. We're going to pick up the story of Little Faith. After he's been jumped and beaten by the hoodlums, left to dead on the path. His certificate intact, but his money gone. And it says, It was told that the good man was much afflicted because of his loss. For the thieves got most of his spending money. He also had a bit of other money left, but hardly enough to sustain himself until the end of the journey. He was forced to beg as he went along to keep keep himself alive. But begging and doing what he could, he went, as we would say it reads, with many a hungry belly for most of the part and the rest of the journey. So, so far on the journey, Christian, been hopeful now, I mean, Christian has faced, he's fallen in the swamp that, that represented initial discouragement, uh, he's faced fiery darts representing spiritual battles. Uh, he's faced, he's gone head to head with Apollyon representing a, a spiritual uh, battle. He's had to walk through a valley of darkness. He's been captured by a giant, which represented discour- discouragement and despair who locked him up. Uh, he's just been in one, he had to climb this hill of difficulty. He had to walk between two lions that lined the road. I mean, he, he's faced challenge after challenge, and and what the book is saying, we're going to face the life is a gauntlet. Everything's trying to reach and strip and take away what we have in Christ. Uh, and so every believer has to go through this. Uh, but one thing that eased eased them on their journey is they still could take care of their necessities. Uh, and so what this is saying is his money's gone. Therefore, as he's traveling, he's continuing on. He's still facing those other difficulties, uh, but now he's trying to find a way to survive. And he said he spent many of days uh, in hunger pains, which would not be a pleasant, not a pleasant way of travel. But as I said, the most important things were still there. And so I want to read a bit about, about the blessing. Uh, but isn't it a wonder they didn't get from him his certificate? by which he was to receive his admittance at the celestial gate, asked Hopeful. It's a wonder they didn't get it, remarked Christian, though they didn't miss it due to their own cunningness. Being frightened by their assault upon him, he had neither power nor skill to hide anything. So it was more of a good by a good providence than by his effort that they missed such a good thing. And I love that line uh, because it says, he was so surprised. He was so unprepared. He should have been a spiritual prepper uh, for this attack. It caught him such so off guard. Uh, he, he didn't have time to protect his certificate. What was going to admit him in to the celestial city? But it was only through the providence of God that they didn't take it. And it, I think that points to, you know, I think, I know we, we come from all different theological backgrounds. And you know, we, we've talked about a lot about apostasy. I mean, Scripture does talk about people leaving the faith. Uh, but it also, I think, is important to note, it's the Lord who saves us and keeps our salvation. He's the keeper of salvation. Any other way we put it, uh, 
we begin to make our own way. Again, not, I think that has to be balanced with the warnings of apostasy as well. And however that works out and falls, but it was the Lord who kept them from taking that. Then hopeful said, but it has to be a comfort to him that he didn't lose any of the reward, the jewels, his rewards in heaven. It might have been a comfort, responded Christian, and it should have been. But they who told the story said it was little use the rest of the way. And that was because the anxiety he had to do taking away, with them taking away their money. Indeed, he forgot about the rewards in heaven for the, the rest of his journey. Besides, when at any time it didn't come into his mind, he, and he began to be confronted with it. The fresh thoughts of his loss were upon him. And those thoughts were swallow up everything. And now we're getting to the point that convicted me. And I think that we need to know to get this end time attitude that we need to have. This tribulation attitude. Uh, So it says, yeah, he should have been felt blessed that he still had his eternal life. He still had his rewards in, in heaven. But it says it was little use because he quit pursuing Faithfulness because he was in such anxiety about what he didn't have to live that day. And it says anytime he would begin to think about the age to come, he would just become overwhelmed by what he lost. He was dwelling on the lost money. He was dwelling on the struggle to survive and forgetting about the great things the Lord had already done for him. Now, I get it, right? This kind of probably connects with a lot of our everyday life, right? We get focused in on just surviving, just moving our family down the, you know, forward in life, taking care of the necessities, taking care of uh, what's before us. And we have a hard time looking ahead. And especially if we have been done wrong, and we've faced great struggle, and we've had great loss. It's so easy to focus on that loss, the unfairness of that loss, seemingly unfairness of that loss, and not think about what lies ahead. And that's exactly where little faith was. He was, he kept going. He stood firm, and he kept marching on, which is amazing. He had some faith. But inside, he was eat up with an anxiety of where his next meal will come. How is he going to survive? How is he going to be sustained in the journey? Even though in his, literally in the story, in his pocket, he had his certificate for celestial city, for eternal life, for the, the kingdom. He was going to get to go into the kingdom and be there forever. And he had rewards there. But yet he continued on. So we heard a little bit about his attitude, that he was swallowed up with the thoughts of what he lost. But he didn't just keep that inside. Christian goes on, I was told that he went almost all the way, scattering about nothing but dismal and bitter complaints. Also, as he went, he told everyone who passed him or whom he passed in the way where and how he was robbed, who they were, who did it, why they did it, what he lost, how he was wounded, and that he barely escaped with his life. You don't have to name any names, but you know that person, right? Where you're always going to get that same story. You're like, oh, no, we're going here again. Uh, You know you know what they're going to say. You can push the button and just go. You know, you already have it memorized. Uh, That was so all on this journey. He's continuing on. He's fighting the difficulties of the journey. He has the faith to move on, but yet his attitude is everywhere he goes, instead of sowing seeds of joy and goodness, he sows seeds of bitterness and complaints. Everybody just hears how bad he was hurt, not how he was rescued. They hear what he lost, not what he has. They hear about the past and not where he's going and I get it. That's me. I've done that. I I throw pity parties all the time. But it was totally convicted. As you look from a distance, 
listen, if you're going to have a little bit of faith to go down the journey, you might as well have all the faith and go, go full force, right? If you're going to continue on in the journey, why keep talking about what you lost? If it's not going to help you, if you're still going to go to bed with a hungry stomach, why complain about it? Why sow that seed everywhere else? But that was his attitude. And then they have this discussion. We're hopeful, ask this question, well, why didn't he trade those jewels, which represented rewards in heaven, for things here? And Christian then begins to tell hopeful the story of Esau. Genesis 27, you know the story of Esau. Many of you are familiar with it. Esau was out hunting. Uh, Jacob was Jacob, who we know as Israel later. Uh, Jacob, the so Esau's the firstborn. Uh, Jacob's the second born and uh, Jacob's in there making, making dinner, making a, a, a stew scripture says scripture seems to make a point of just how little valuable of a meal this is. Esau comes in, he's famished. He wants something to eat. He wants to eat it now. And, and Jacob said, and he wants Jacob's stew that he's working on. And Jacob being the jerk brother, he was says, okay, if you trade me your birthright, your inheritance, your name, all that you're promised that will continue on in the rest of your life and forever in your generation, I'll give you this too. And, and I, I think for us to understand, he's basically saying, uh, if you give me your birthright and your inheritance and your family's inheritance for all ages to come, I will give you this bowl of Roman noodles. noodles Roman noodles. <laughs> I think that's how we need to see this. Birthright, inheritance, traded for a bowl, ramen noodles. Terrible deal, right? And Esau says, you've got a deal. Hey, here you go. Take my inheritance. It doesn't mean anything to me now. Give me the my ramen noodles. And he did. He ate his stew. For the moment, his stomach was full. But then Jacob received the blessings and the inheritance and everything that was given to Esau and something that has continued on to descendants even today and will play out even unto the last days and on the fields of our, of the battle of Armageddon. Amazing. And so even though they've given little faith a bad rap, Christian says, why would he trade that? And he never thought about that because nothing on this earth, no matter how much your your stomach growled, no matter how much you wanted it or felt you needed it, nothing was worth trading what you have to come. So little faith had the faith to realize how valuable the age to come and the rewards to come and the faith to come was, but yet he was still going and he was complaining. And sorry, one of my the children's books that we read to to our kids, uh, the pout, the the pout pout fish. Um, I don't know if that's the name of it. Uh, where it says this the the pout pout fish who's uh spreading grumpies everywhere, and I probably got that that wrong. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's that's what he was doing. He was a powder, and he's just grumbling all the way. Picture that. Somebody giving their life, continuing on this journey, who believes and, and knows what they have, but yet are so bitter about what they're lost and what they don't have at the moment. Counterproductive, isn't it? But I, I would say, I, I know this is me most of the time. I'm the guy writing books about, uh, you know, even if our, we have a gun to our head and we're being persecuted, we need to remain faithful. But then it comes to the first thing that I, I feel I feel like I have to go without or unfairly didn't receive or something like that, and I'm going to throw me a pity party. Maybe I'm alone, but I, I don't think so. You know, I think all of you, many of you gathered here, or you're gathered here because at some point the Lord stirred something within your heart about the age to come and where we were and what was going on. And maybe you shared that. 
they told you, you're crazy. Where's your tin full hat? You maybe you're pushed out. Some of you have shared stories. You're pushed out of a fellowship. Believers you were in. I can't believe it, but I guess I should believe it. And then we will move on in bitterness about how no one's listening. How we were treated. By what people think of us. We can't remain and grumble. You can't be, you know, if we happen to be a generation that faces restrictions and persecutions within our nations, we can't stand up and say, no matter what happens, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to stand firm, even if I lose my life. We can't continue to meet in secret underground if it's, and still at the same time be bitter that we're having to. Wow, it probably speaks to this COVID-19 situation. It's amazing. We're involved in a lot of pastor groups. And it's just moaning and groaning and grumbling and fussing. This, Why would this stupid pandemic happen? It's messing up how I want to do church. I did a nationwide poll with pastors to see what your biggest frustration was. And a choir director, and, and I mean, I hope you're not listening, but a choir director reached out and said how upset he was because the choir was getting momentum in uh, in their practices. <laughs> Can I just say that again? That, yeah, that was my thoughts. I'm thinking like you. Seriously, dude? Uh, that That's what you're going to come with? Uh, but it is. It's groaning about because we're not able to do it like we want to do it. Again, on, on Sundays, the church I'm meeting on, uh, meeting at, we, well, things in Arkansas were, were, were basically in the clear and it like we we're going to get to go back and meet within our, our building right away. And so we, we did a couple weeks outside and just thought we'd do it two weeks. We'd be in the building and then, uh, our area became a hot spot. And so we began just meeting outside and we had this mantra that we kept saying is whatever happens, let's see it as an opportunity. Uh, not as a restriction. And it's been beautiful. Uh, just today, as we, we're having our service, we, we've, so we have canopies set up outside. We, I, 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 just to make it sound more fun, I, I pretend like we're at a, like a, um, some kind of music festival in the summer, you know, it's Woodstock into Epic Church. And, uh, we've got folks gathered there and it's, uh, for some who, uh, maybe it's too hot or, uh, you know, extra concerned about, or maybe they're at risk and they're listening through it, the radio in their car to the, of the service as well. Got all this going on and we're in the middle of this neighborhood and it's this big uh, lake and park and this beautiful area that a lot of people hike and walk in and ride bikes and walk dogs in. And so we've got the sidewalk that goes to it, comes right by our church. And so we, we put a tent out there and we're giving out water and dog biscuits and bowls of water for dogs and uh, just trying to say hello. And so we've got everybody like that is walking now completely avoiding the church and all that stuff. And everybody's having to hear the sermon that comes by and hear the music and hear the sound problems, all that stuff is beautiful. And, uh, but today as I was preaching, I looked across and this guy who's been running and walking every Sunday, uh, stopped and listened to the message. Opportunity. Let's don't view challenges, difficulties. Just don't get bitter. I'm going to tell you, I am the hypocrite to say this. I get mad. I get mad at sermons when I go and I hear somebody preaching. You just need to put some gratitude in your attitude. (laughs) I get bitter and mad about what they're saying. Well, shut up. I want to be mad. I want to be mad. Whatever the generation is at the end, whatever the generation it is in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, whatever the generation is that is sensing the Lord is up to something and no one is listening and it's very frustrating. Whoever those people are, I mean, I think they're tuning in right now. We really need to make sure that we don't finish our race 
bitter at what we've had to go through, bitter at what we had to lose, dwelling on what we lost and not what we're going to receive. I really don't want to say it. Yeah, we, we need some gratitude in our attitude. When you get this bird's eye view, when you you you, you back up and, and look like I think you get to with Pilgrim Progress and you just look at little faith and you're like, dude, you had the faith to continue on. You trusted the Lord to give your life to move forward, but at the same time you're fussing about this bad thing you went through and you spend your rest of your life going back to that. Dude, get over it. Move on. Make the most of it. Oh, yeah, uh, the pow pow fish would sp- would uh, spread dreary drears all over the place. But after he got a kiss by the shining fish, he then began to spread cheery cheeries all over the face. And as we see this bird's eye view of, of little faith, we're going to face difficulty. Let's don't spread dreary drearies. It spread cheery cherries. Uh, that was definitely not in the notes, and I'm embarrassed I went there. But let's take on a good attitude in these difficulties. Which brings me with the passage I want to close with. To me, it's one of the most ridiculous passages in Scripture. Yeah, I said that about Scripture. When I read it, I'm like, really? Somebody wrote this? It comes from James, James 1, chapter 1, uh, verse 2. Many of you already know it by what I, I just said. James is writing to believers who are beginning to be persecuted, who are facing difficulty, and he writes them and says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when everyone faces trials of many kinds, because you know that your te- The testing of your faith develops perseverance. Seriously. I mean, you think, so this is an epistle and it's being read aloud and they read, consider it joy, you're being killed. Or then you pick up the book of Philippians. You know, this letter that was written to the church of Philippi that Paul writes as he's in jail, he's in prison and he writes them and he wears out the word. If he had a modern editor today, they would have made him use different words because he used rejoice all the time in chains. And he's telling these guys, hey, it's bad. Rejoice, rejoice. Whatever happens, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. It's true. Why would we not with what we have in the Lord and what we have to come? If we're going to have just a little bit of faith, why not go full force on our faith? If we're going to move forward in our walk, why don't we get over the past, the discouragement, the disappointment, the bitterness, quit spreading dreary juries and spread cheery cheeries. In time, church, when you face trials now and in the future, consider it joy. Because the Lord is at work in you. Others are watching. And you have a chance to say. The God I'm pursuing. Is worth more. Than what I lost. Let me pray for you. Father I thank you so much. uh, For the opportunity to be in two places tonight. uh, To to be here at End Time Church. Via video. uh, To be speaking. And uh, Lord I, I pray that. Uh, both places, Lord, that you would move. Lord, I, I pray that you would convict us. I, I pray someone would leave this message taking on a better attitude. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, my brother. Hey, guys, I hope you can appreciate Jake. Um, I do. Very rare bird, that guy, in a good way. That um, he would be so consistent in his in his what he's been called to proclaim, and uh, what he contributes obviously to ETC is uh, invaluable. Really, isn't even the word, but um, essential. 
essential. God put this thing together, um, and a big part of it is his message of consistency to remain faithful no matter what. And it sounds ridiculous, like James says, um, and like he pointed out, but you know what? It's still true. Still true. So I right now just posted links for our after party. Uh, you are welcome to join us. It is a uh, live video conference, but it's not public, okay? It's just us. Whoever wants to join uh, can feel free to do that, please. And uh, remember, now, now hopefully tonight you've seen, if you're new or if you've only been with us a few times, um, we don't just, this church isn't just about teaching the end time scriptures, although we do do that, of course, and we feel it's necessary, and it is necessary. Um, but not just telling you the end time stuff, but how we are to live through those days and today. Because we're not quite at the end yet. We might be near, we might be at the precipice, we might be at the doors, but even how do we live today? Today in July 2020. And August coming up here real quick like freight train. How do we live now? How should our attitudes be now? How do we walk in the Spirit? How do we show the fruits of the Spirit? Every day I pray for my own family that we would display, starting with me, the fruits of the Spirit and not our own flesh and not our own anything, but only the things that come from the Lord, starting with love. So that's, the I think, the first step in getting our attitudes correct. And I'll never forget the words, cheery, cheery, now, as long as I live. Uh, what well, the other one? Dreary, drearies. Okay, guys, we love you so much. We hope you have been blessed tonight. If you have, please consider giving and joining into what we're doing, partnering in our mission. Get the app. Uh, be a part of the things that you see there uh, because I, I want you to take ownership of it because it's the Lord's doing, and he wants his children to boldly approach the throne and to use the gifts that he's given. Why would... He give them if he doesn't want us to use it, right? Okay, amen. So you have the link. Uh, you're welcome to come join us in just a moment. I'll see you there. Uh, and until next time, this is Christopher Manti for Pastor Christopher Anderson, wonderful worship set, and Pastor Jake McCandless, and all of our leaders and elders and singers and just wonderful saints throughout the world. We bid you adieu. And again, as James says, Lord willing, until next time. This is End Time Church. See ya.